Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I thought I'd answer some of your questions about my pregnancy. I posted a photo and asked you guys to comment your questions and I'm going to answer as many of them as I can right now. A question I got a lot was, do I want more children? The short answer, no, not right now. I don't want any more in the near future. Two babies is definitely enough for me for now, but maybe one more like way down the line in like six years or something. I don't know when the, when Sass and Wolf are a bit older, then maybe I might have another one. Not anytime soon. Like I'm two babies is good. I'm done for babies for now. No more babies. I actually um kind of want Reese to get a vasectomy just so we don't accidentally fall pregnant again, but. He won't do that. Difference between pregnancies and labor. Well, they were really, really different. I mean, with Wolf, it was kind of like I wasn't pregnant. It was really just easy. I didn't get any sickness. I didn't get anything. I was energetic. I was just enjoying my pregnancy. It was really great. But with Sass, I was tired all the time, taking care of Wolf. I was just not <laughs> enjoying it as much. I was um, also a lot bigger with Sass, so it was a lot more uncomfortable. Also, when I was pregnant with Saskia, I've mentioned in another video, towards the end we found out that I had polyhydramnios, which is extra amniotic fluid, and that was really exhausting and also really scary because we had to do a lot of tests. We were going to the hospital almost every day towards the end to do tests and or things like that. There were appointments where I'd cry because I was so like scared of like they were telling me like it could be this or that or like all these scary situations. Everything ended up being fine and all the tests came back great so thank goodness for that. I was so happy and so relieved. But yeah, they were very very different pregnancies and it just shows like everyone has really different experiences. Difference in labor. Well, the labors were also very different. With Wolf, I was in bed, I was about 37 weeks, and I was in bed just um, looking at my phone. It was like 4 a.m. and I'd just woken up, gone to the bathroom, sat back down in bed, was checking my phone, and all of a sudden, this big, like, gush. <laughs> my water broke. You know how they say like, oh, it's not like in the movies, it's not like water flooding everywhere. Well, it was like, a lot of water and I'm sorry if this is like too much information it's kind of gross but that's what happened and I actually thought I was like peeing myself because it's a really like weird thing like I thought I was peeing the bed and then I realized what was happening and I got up ran into the bathroom next to our bed and I was like calling out for Reese I was like Reese like wake up my water just broke and it was raining outside so he thought like he was half asleep so he thought I was saying like water's coming in from the rain outside he was like what is one of the doors open and I was like no like my water broke we're having a baby right now and he literally sprung out of bed like I've never seen him jump out of bed so quickly it was pretty funny and then he's just standing there like didn't know what to do and I was like okay I'm just gonna call the hospital you go like see if the car seat and everything's all ready I called the hospital they were like asking me if I was having contractions and blah blah, blah. and um, I told them I was but they weren't very painful and they're like just come into the hospital in about an hour like you've got some time don't like rush so then I just like got ready got my bag ready put on some makeup <laughs> And then once we got in the car to go, they my contractions started getting a bit more close together and a bit more painful. I was just like getting really uncomfortable. It's like a, it's kind of like a period pain at first, and it just comes like every few minutes. That's what it felt like to me, like period pain. And then by the time we got to the hospital, I was crying. I was like begging Reese, I was like, Reese, I need the epidural, like we, like I can't do this. And before the pregnancy, I had planned to, I wanted no drugs, I wanted nothing, I wanted the whole experience, I wanted to feel everything. 
But yeah, we got to the hospital, I was crying, they took us to the room, they were like, the anesthesia, the guy who does the epidurals, they were like, he doesn't get here till 7am, so you have to wait a while, and it was, I don't know, like 4am or something. So I just like ripped my clothes off, I jumped in the shower, and I was just like on the floor crying, and like, they gave me happy gas, so I was like, every time I had a contraction, I was like screaming, and then in between contractions I was like laughing and Reese just did not know what to do he was just like and I swear anything he did I would have like got angry at him because him like telling me like you're doing great like that was like pissing me off so much like I swear to god I just wanted to punch him in the face <laughs> I don't know what it was but like anything he said I was just like shut up but then finally the guy came to give me my epidural and it didn't hurt at all it was because i was already in pain from the contractions so once he did that straight away started going numb from the waist down it was the best after that couldn't feel contractions i was just chilling waiting in bed and then um the doctor came in and he was checking the heartbeat because i had a thing monitoring monitor monitor i had a thing monitoring wolf's heartbeat on and he said that um his heartbeat was going down every time I had a contraction so he was in distress and he was like he wasn't like freaking out about it but he was like we've got to do an emergency c-section so I, at that point I was like let's go let's do it let's get this baby out and then went into the operating room they got him out and that was that and then with SAS because of the condition that I had we I found out I had to have another c-section because I was going to try for natural we found out that it was just too risky because the condition I had all the extra fluid was putting pressure on my previous c-section scar so it was just too risky so we booked that in a few days before and then on the day we got ready went into the hospital and yeah waited a few hours and then went in and had SARS so yeah they were completely different like I'm not trying to scare you from having a baby with saying how painful it was and all that honestly like you don't even remember the pain after that much everyone's experience is different some people don't even have that much pain I don't know it was pretty damn painful for me how did we react when we found out I was pregnant with Wolf I think we were both just in shock because we didn't plan Wolf we were just both kind of freaking out a little bit at first. I mean, I think like when I did the pregnancy test, I I was kind of like laughing at first because I just didn't know what to like say. I could, had no words and then Reese was like kind of the same. He I think he like almost threw up at one point, but we were both just like sitting there just like in shock. And then once we processed it, we were like, okay, like, let's do this, let's have a baby. And then with SAS, I, we planned to have her, we, I stopped taking the pill and we were like, let's knock another one out of the park, let's have another baby so Wolf has a little sibling. I was doing pregnancy tests like every single day because I kept thinking I was pregnant and then um, finally I did one and it had a really, really faint second line on it. So I was like, I literally like looked at it like, so much because I could you could barely see the second line and when I showed Reese, he was like there's no line he's like you're not pregnant turns out I was what did I do to prevent stretch marks you guys ask me this a lot I didn't get any stretch marks on my belly actually I got one random little one right above my belly button and I only noticed it after I gave birth which is really strange it's just like one little stretch mark above my belly button but um other than that I didn't get any I got some on my boobs when I was pregnant with wolf what I used every single day through both my pregnancies was rosehip oil it is seriously like so amazing I rubbed it on my belly twice a day morning and night the brand I use was Cora Organics which is Miranda Kerr's brand but you can literally use any brand it's all the same also I think what else helped with my not getting stretch marks was eating a lot of veggies a lot of protein just eating clean and drinking a lot of water as well helps with skin elasticity so that's definitely a big part and also exercising and also being young might be a factor in that as well because i think when you're younger your skin's a bit more elastic 
How did I bounce back so quickly after both pregnancies? What helped me bounce back is definitely how I ate and trained while I was pregnant. I ate clean literally most of the time. I mean, I did slip up a lot more than I do when I'm not pregnant. Like I did have a lot more extra treats. I didn't beat myself up about it. But yeah, I ate very clean. I ate a lot of veggies, a lot of protein, and I only tried to limit my treats to the weekends. So during the week I was eating mostly clean, like pretty much all the time. And also straight after birth for both births, for about a week or so, I wore a postpartum binder. They gave me one in hospital. Like it helps your uterus contract and it helps things come back together a bit quicker. I definitely didn't just like snap back to my pre-baby body once I stepped out of hospital. You still look pregnant straight after you come out of hospital. Like your uterus is still huge. It You need time to go back down. So I wasn't in a rush or anything, but as soon as I got home, I was eating clean. I was wearing the postpartum binder. And then I started working out about six weeks after the birth. Did I eat healthy and exercise while pregnant? Well, yes, as I said, I ate clean pretty much all the time. Like there were days where I would just eat everything and eat like donuts and go crazy. But I didn't let that like happen through every day throughout my whole pregnancy. Like I made sure I ate healthy and I exercised probably about four times a week when I was pregnant. When I was pregnant with Wolf, it was probably like five times a week. When I was pregnant with Sass, it was probably about four times a week. I was more tired, but I still made sure I got it done. What helped keep me motivated was definitely how I felt when I worked out compared to how I felt when I didn't. I felt that like on days where I'd skip my workout, I felt really sluggish and I felt really gross and like bleh. And then on days that I did work out, I felt amazing and I felt more energetic. So that in itself really helped me keep on track and made sure I kept working out. Another thing that helped me stay motivated was thinking about after the baby like I wanted I knew I wanted to get fit again after the baby and be in the best shape I could be so I wanted to make it easier for myself after by staying active while I was pregnant did I get any cravings with wolf I ate watermelon pretty much every single day so I think that was my big craving it's not really something strange but yeah, I was eating it every single day. Reese was constantly rushing to the store to get me more watermelon because I was eating it all the time. And with Sass, I didn't... Oh, actually, you know how you hear um, pregnant people eating pickles? I actually craved pickles quite a lot when I was pregnant with Sass. And baklava. For some reason, when I was pregnant with Saskia, all I wanted was baklava all the time, which is, like, pretty unhealthy. It's, like, just sugar. Did you get postpartum depression? No, I didn't get postpartum depression, but after both pregnancies, it's really like, don't be worried if you're like really up and down, your hormones are all over the place. After um, Wolf, I was, yeah, in the first few days, I was like really quite down. Like I was so in love with my new baby, but I was really like overwhelmed and I was like, how do I do this? How do I take care of a baby? Like this little person needs me to do everything for it. Like, and it was really an overwhelming feeling, feeling, but that's just your hormones and you get into routine and it gets so much easier. And then with Sass, I had that little overwhelming period again. I was so in love with her, but I think it was even harder with Sass because I had a lot of guilt when I first had her about not being able to like give my, all my attention to Wolf and that was really hard for me. I had a bit of a cry about it I think a few days after birth. I think a lot of it also was because of my c-section so I wasn't able to pick up Wolf and like play with him as much so that was making me feel like oh my gosh I'm not giving him all my attention and I have to give my attention to this new baby and it was making me really low but that was again was just hormones and after about a week I started feeling so much better everything was great so don't be worried if you're feeling really low straight after birth it happens to everyone and it's really a common thing best and worst parts of being pregnant the best part 
would be feeling the baby in your belly like anything like when they get hiccups it was like the most amazing thing and feeling them just kicking and rolling around in there it's just an amazing feeling and then the worst part would definitely be like the how big and uncomfortable you get at the end like at the end of both of them I was uncomfortable you just over it by the end I mean some women love being pregnant but I am not one of those women I am so blessed that I was able to carry my children but I was so done by the end of it I was like get them out did I get cellulite yeah when I was pregnant with both Wolf and Saskia I got a lot of cellulite on my legs and that was just like when you're pregnant you are going to gain extra weight no matter how healthy you're eating and stuff most women do gain extra weight especially around the um, thighs and yeah I had quite a bit of cellulite especially towards the end with both of them it wasn't something I was stressed about because I knew that after the pregnancy I would be able to get fit again what is the c-section scar like my c-section scar is about that big so it's like really not wide at all and it's really really low down like you can wear low-cut bikinis and you can't see it what was the first thing you thought when you saw oh, someone's at the door I'll be right back the postman just came and woke this little munchkin up didn't he uh, yeah. yeah that's you what was the first thing I thought when I saw Wolf and Saskia well the first thing I thought when I saw Wolf was just, I was just overwhelmed with emotion. I started crying. They put him on my chest and I was just like, like, I'm so blessed. Like, that's all I was thinking. I was thinking like, who is this beautiful little tiny human? Actually, the very first thing I thought, I remember I said it, I was like, he's so tiny. Because um, I was measuring big when I was pregnant with him. So I thought I was going to have this like huge baby. But he was so little. And then the first thing I thought when I had Sass, well, straight away when I had her, they I didn't get her for about five minutes because um, she was having trouble breathing on her own so they had the oxygen machine on her I didn't know what was happening so I was like freaking out a little bit and I was just like lying there waiting like I could hear all the machines and all stuff and all them talking and I was just like it was giving me like anxiety but I was just I couldn't see what they were doing I couldn't do anything and I made Reese make sure he was over there I was like go stay with her so then after about five minutes all of a sudden Reese was standing next to me and I didn't like I wasn't thinking properly so I didn't realize he was actually standing there holding her to bring her to me I thought that she was still over there and I was just like ignoring him and then all of a sudden I real like I looked at him and I realized he was holding her and I just burst into tears and I was just like so so overwhelmed and then he passed her to me put her on my chest and it was just the most amazing feeling I was just so relieved that she was fine and I was just like I'm so unbelievably lucky so that was the first thing I thought with her is being a young mum hard I think being a young being a mum at any age is hard like you're giving up a lot and you're like making your life your children's life so being a mum at any age is hard but I think being a young mum yeah it's pretty hard because as I said you're giving up a lot of things but it was nothing that I wasn't prepared to give up like you can't go out as much you can't do the same things you used to do because you have babies to look after it's definitely difficult but it was something that I was happy to do for my little babies guys look at his teddy bear can I show them Ted how gr it's like covered in dirt and it smells kind of like pee I think it's time we put him in the wash but Wolf is like obsessed with him like he we wash him but he gets so dirty straight away again so yeah here's a question <laughs> is it true that after giving birth you have to wear an adult diaper because of bleeding birth isn't the most glamorous thing you don't have to wear a diaper but you do have like a period kind of thing for like six weeks after you give birth so get some maternity pads <laughs> handy maternity pads are like pads but they're like this long and like this thick yeah. they're great also I had a few questions about breastfeeding so I want to answer those 
The question I get a lot is, do what do I do when I go out? Do I pump milk or do I give the sus formula or what? So in the very beginning, if I had to like go do something, I would pump formula. I mean, I'd pump breast milk. Now, if I go somewhere or like how me and Reese went to <laughs> Melbourne overnight, I just leave formula at home. I feel like for me, it's an easier option than pumping. Do I breastfeed in public? <laughs> Yes, I do. If Sass is hungry, like, I'm gonna feed her. It doesn't matter where I am. Mm -hmm. I usually bring, like, a little... <laughs> You're so cute. <laughs> I usually bring, like, a little, like, a little wrap blanket thing and just put it over her while I'm feeding her. So, because people will, like, look and, like, I don't know. It just makes me a little bit uncomfortable if people, like, staring at my boob feeding my baby. Or if I'm, like, at a person's house or something, I just go into the other room <laughs> you're so funny I think women should feed their baby whenever and wherever they want because babies gotta eat stop you're so annoying okay I'm gonna go give this little man some lunch yeah okay say bye to everyone say bye 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 I hope I answered a lot of your questions if I didn't answer some of your questions, I might do a part two. Bye. To the yeah, bye. I might do a part two to this video later on, bye. so I can answer any other questions that I missed. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. Bye.